Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is November 23rd, 2018, and this is our episode number 391. Today's randomly selected company's general shopping and outlets do Brasil. Uh, in our stock exchange, we seem to have a few sectors that look a little bit overrepresented proportionally to the overall economy. I may be mistaken, it may be just my impression, but uh, medical labs, car rental companies, and uh, sh sh malls, shopping centers, those three like seem to have, you know, because Brazil right now like is a, a very deindustrialized company, uh, country, uh, we do have a lot of uh, agricultural companies and a lot of electricity companies uh, but those two you know they seem like there is some justification these are other three I don't know but I may be wrong there uh, in general shopping's case we're looking at a, a holding company that is not the most famous company and as you know if you if you're aware that we kind of go towards what they call value investing, that's n not necessarily any problem at all for us. Uh, so I was looking at the malls and, and you know, uh, this company's subsidiaries, just to see if I've been to one of them. I'm not a, very much of a, a mall guy, I have to say, but still, no, I haven't been to any of them. Uh, it's interesting to see that they're going for large, uh, cities not necessarily always capitals and in the large cities one that I I could uh, mention something about is if this one is in the uh, the neighborhood of Sula, Sula Cap in Rio so they went for a more suburban place uh, but suburbs in Brazil mean something very very different from suburbs in the United States and perhaps even Europe anyway uh, there's n nothing particularly brilliant at all that I can add from that. It's just, okay, you know, just a first look at uh, who these, these, who they are, who this company is. And so uh, let's find what we have here. General Shopping. Very slow. All right, here it is. And as we can see, uh, we only have three years worth of information here. We didn't go very deep at all. And this is usually a symptom that I found something that made me stop. In, in this case, it's very clear to me. It's just the debt levels, liabilities levels uh, were too high uh, for me. These numbers don't look like uh, there's like the, they're in the eminence of bankruptcy. Nothing of the sort. Just not a super safe uh, uh, set of numbers. If you remember that I try to go always for companies carrying debt to equities between 0 and 0 0.5. There are, there are a bunch of caveats to that, like how the, the equities are calculated, so on and so forth. But as a general rule of thumb, I try to be extremely uh, cautious in that regard. So now... Oh, one other thing that seemed kind of interesting was the direction here. So the direction was auspicious. Both debt to equity and liability to equity were moving down. So perhaps they're cleaning up their balance sheet. So now let's see if they have three quarters worth of information. I would say that the majority of companies at this point, they have put it out for three quarters and indeed these guys have as well all right let's 
Let's download this. Here we are. So we go for the consolidated statements, perhaps page 13. Let's we'll see. Not quite. All right. So here is, it's the net, net worth, their net worth. So very striking that it's moved down by a, a, a quarter, something of the sort, even more than a quarter. So it's at 876 right now. Also striking is the movement here. So it's go up, it goes up and down by quite a lot. Okay. Remains to be seen why, but we may not even get to that. <clears throat> so now liability. So we'll add 2.01 and 2.02. It's current and non-current liability, so 308 plus 1981 All right, so liabilities have moved down by a little bit but I think considering inflation it's moved oh actually no it's moved down yeah uh, it's moved down it really seems to have okay now loans current loans 38 million in non-current 1240 847. So that's 1285. So as, as you can see here, the debt to equity is at the worst. Well, this is a quarterly statement, but from these three, out of these three, uh, it's at the worst point, and so are the liabilities to equity. So, uh, mm, yeah, these are not so good there. Uh, <coughs> all right, so current a current ratio, which will be current assets divided by current liabilities, so that's eight hundred and forty-five divided by three hundred and eight, so two point seven four. So here they seem to be carrying a safe uh, ratio of dollars in the pocket to dollars they know they will have to pay out. Uh, in this ratio, the, the minimum for a very defensive investor would be two. Awesome. Now revenue, so it's 160 million. So think about this, they have all those malls and their revenue is just 160 million out of a year, you know, like 50 million dollars. Seems pretty low to me. All right. And earnings. Okay. So they posted very severe er, uh, losses here so far. So 349 times 1.33, so 465, but it's negative, so. And free cash flow. It's hard to imagine how it will have been positive. Well, operating cash flow is already negative, minus 82. So we add that. Oh, wow. So their investment uh, cash flow was very positive. So 704 minus 82. Six twenty-two. <clears throat> yeah. So just as with many real estate companies and can be said that malls are real estate companies uh, we've been seeing a lot of these like negative earnings but positive free cash flows as these companies uh, 
number one, face very tough times, uh, both in the conjuncture and perhaps even structurally uh, with e-commerce. Uh, e-commerce in Brazil is not as disseminated as it is in the United States. And it's hard to say that it's severely affected commerce in Brazil. It, it may have, but certainly not quite as much by any means as in the United States. But we see in the balance sheets that they're trying to clean up their balance sheets and they're posting the losses, but they've been posting the free cash flows positively. Here. Anyway, in terms of our main goal, which is to come to a conclusion whether or as to whether or not we should uh, dive deeper in this into this company, the answer is no. And it's it's even before looking at results, it's just looking at the balance sheet here. So again, if this is just a random episode that you just landed on, or, or if you have watched a very few episodes of Naive Investor, the basic idea here is to sleep well at night. And no matter what we may convince ourselves that the price movement will be for, for the, the, the shares of any given company, Sleeping well at night means that you know the a company that will exist in the future for first and foremost so that you have a, a high level of Confidence that that company will be around 10 years from now. That's number one and that like we're seeing here that makes us discard uh, Much more than half of the possibilities not that we believe that they'll be you know bankrupt but it's just that we don't know so uh, the vast majority of the companies is not a, a no or a yes it's an i don't know and this one is exactly that an i don't know so with that uh in our next episode we'll come back with a different uh probably randomly selected company we'll see and if you're still here, well, thank you very much. If you're not a subscriber yet, please consider clicking or tapping on the subscribe button so that you get an occasional notification or an email from YouTube uh, telling you of our next adventures here. Regardless of that, I invite you to watch our past episodes. I invite you to watch our future episodes. And as always, if you have questions, suggestions, criticism, and especially if you spot mistakes in the analyses, because they happen, I make a lot of them, please leave a message, a comment in the video, and I'll write you back as soon as I can. Meanwhile, have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.